I think everybody else, you know, with regards to uh, coronavirus. I mean, I've got the virus, but I've got the corona in the fridge. I always go back to the start for my guests, where you grew up and how it all began. Well, I come from my mum's vagina. <laughs> I remember Roy Keane once. I just told him all the time, because I said he was a new kid on the block, and I remember going down the tunnel and I said, Roy, you reckon you're the new kid in the block? Welcome to your worst nightmare. And I won one nil, but he said afterwards in the... New- in the papers, he said, thank God that game's over with. He says, I've never been talked to so much in my life. I used to say, I'm, 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 I'm sleeping with your wife. <laughs> the first one was a call from um, was it Kenny Daglish. And I remember looking at my dad and I went, Dad, Kenny Daglish on the phone. He said, talk to him then. And I spoke to Kenny Daglish for half an hour. And he, my dad said, what did he say? I went, Dad, I didn't understand the <laughs> word he said. So that deal was out of it. I remember when we signed him, I quite fancied him. He doesn't got a hair on his body. And I remember saying, Listen, you're like a fucking lady boy. <laughs> he, he just laughed. It was evening on the 19s. And I was up in his office and he says, Gaza, what's this kid? And I says, How old is he? He went 14. I said, What's his name? He said, Wayne Rooney. And I says, On the 19s, he's only 14. He went, Yeah, put him on in a minute. I think it was 20 minutes ago. And I put him on. Fucking hell, he scored two goals. It was incredible. So afterwards, I went to the dressing room and all the players were sitting there. I went, right, guys, well done. I says, I enjoy watching that. I says, anyway, I've got 40 quid. Is anyone going out tonight for a pint? I'll give you it. And Wayne Rooney put his hand up. He's only 14. Yeah. I says, hey, he's got potential, him. Mm-hmm. If he follows me, he's drinking views. <laughs> he's got potential. What a player he uh, Yeah, up. he still owes us it. Yeah, and he's an unbelievable player, yeah. you know. He, he didn't He didn't look out of place. He trained with the first team at 14, 15. He did not look out of place. He, he was, says you asked for the £40 pounds back. Yeah, later I on. keep asking for it back. <laughs> it's interesting now to be a million quid. <laughs> I loved the World Cup. I took this about... You know, when I was at Reggie Boys Club, when I was young at seven, I took it the World Cup as if I was back at the Boys Club. And I was playing table tennis. I was doing daft things. Um, I was playing tennis. I was on pedal boats. I was sliding the odd co- cocktail was the best. I said, I need a drink. I have a drink, and there was a, a beach hut on the beach, and the, there was no one about. So I went, Oh, so one of the guy gives a pina colada, and he went, Okay, and he gives a nice pina colada. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, Oh, God, I'm in the World Cup, the sun on the beach, drinking a pina colada, fucking life. And I just said, Gaza, and I went, Oh, fuck. And I said, Why be off? And he went, What you got there? So I panicked, and I went, oh, I've got a milkshake, Gaza. He went, Give us a taste of that. I went, Shit. So he had a taste, he went, Oh. So he said to the guy, can I have one of them? And I went behind Sir Bobby, I looked at the guy, he went, shit myself. <laughs> so the guy, looking up the guy, cotton done, and he gave Bobby Robson just a normal circuit. So he drank his a little bit with a straw, and he went, no, no, because it tastes yours, and he tasted mine. I thought, he's got me, he's going to send us back home. He had a taste of his, and then he said to the guy, he went, no, no, this is not the fucking same. And the guy says, what do you mean? He says, where's my umbrella and the cherry <laughs> and the sword? Oh, I get in. I thought, brilliant. Uh, he shot off and I uh, put another eight uh, and just fell asleep on the beach. Were you not playing tennis before the, the night before the semi-final yeah, as the, well? Yeah, the semi-final, I just room with Chris Waddle. And I said to Chris, I can't sleep. I said, God, it was like half past ten at night. So I went for a walk and I heard somebody playing tennis. And there was two Americans. And I just went in the court. I said, can I challenge this? And when I was your partner, I said, no, take the two years on. And I was playing for about 20 minutes. I was sweating me nuts off trying to beat them. And I just heard, Gaza! And I went, oh, shit. And he come into the tennis court. He walked past me, so I dropped the racket and ran like fucked in my room. And I could hear him shouting to the Americans, do you not know who he is? He's got the most important game in his life tomorrow, and you're playing fucking tennis with him. So I ran the room, and I went to Chris. If anyone knocks on the door, just tell him I'm sleeping, I'm tired. He went, yeah, no problem, Gaza. Fucking hell, the door. He was, he was going to get broken in, man. Smashed. Chris went, who is it? He went to Gaffer. Where is he? He's sleeping. And he went, sleeping? He's been playing tennis for fucking half an hour. And Chris looked at me. He went, have you? And I looked, went, <laughs> to sleep. And then I let that just come through the door underneath. And I was, I've had a look at it. And he said, I'll see you in tomorrow morning. So the next day, I was like hiding from him. Because I didn't want to know if I'm going to play. I'll drop it. Or he's going to drop us. And um, I was hiding and then he just come round the corner. I always remember it was about half a seven taps on the shoulder. And he went, forget about last night. I've already called you daft the brush. Last night wasn't normal. He says, but neither are you. He says, today you're playing against the best player in the world, Luther Matthias. And I looked at the gaffer and I went, I'm sorry, gaffer, but he is. And I walked off. And he went, come back. And I just kept on walking. And then I, I looked behind, he had his head to the ground, just shaking his head like that, saying, God, what am I going to do with him? I remember once 
it was on a Friday night, and it was at Cameron's house, and I thought, ah, it was seven and eight o'clock at night, it was on a Friday, and I thought I'd have a, a light shandy. So I'm having the shandy, and I seen the gaffer walk past us, and I went, oh, fuck. And so I just thought, shit. So I left it, went to my room, and I went to, went to the dress, went to the, the, ch- went to the ground the next day on the Saturday, and it was like 10 past two. So he got your kit on, ready for the game. And he went, come here, I want a word with you. And I went, oh, fuck me. And I walked out of the dressing room, because the older player's gone, eh-eh. So I'm like, I'm, I think that's OK. So I went to his office with him. And what was that you had last night? I was just, that just a shandy gap, and nothing else. He went, oh, was it? Get back in there, take your kit off, put your fucking suit on, and get the fuck out of my club. So I just giggled. He went, I'm fucking serious, do it now. I went, oh, fuck. So I went in the dress room, and I've taken my kit off, my number eight shirt and that, and the players were like, what's happening? I went, I've got to go fucking home. So I put my suit on, and all the lads were giggling a bit. I went, fuck, Tony, he's fuming. So I'm walking out the pitch, I'm walking out the ground and all the fucking fans are coming in. And guys, where are you going? Oh, I don't feel well today, guys. Gotta go home, I've got a stomach bug. Just fucking said that. And then I had to sit indoors for three days. And he says, right, you're allowed to come back to the club. I says, OK. And he says, I'll tell you when to fucking drink and not to drink. I went, OK, I'm sorry, Gabba. And he says, give me... So funny, he went... I didn't know, he went, get me a brace on Saturday. So I went, OK, then. So I went to the shop and bought a fucking brace. I didn't realise the brace was two goals. So I managed to score two. I managed to score three. In fact, it was against Motherwell. I scored a hat trick, so that was okay. Did uh, you know how big the rivalry was between Celtic Rangers, especially nah. when you played the flute? Fucking hell. When you I got mean, the death threats? Four. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Ian Ferguson, that was. <laughs> he just said, you know, if you score, do the sash. And I don't know what's a sash. He says that, and he showed us. He says, the fans would love it. When he said that, and he says, the fans would love it. And I went, ooh, I'll do anything for the fucking fans, me. And obviously scored against Stoke Bucharest, and I did it. So I, I scored, and on the way home, I told my dad, I went, Dad, get the papers, I'm on all the fucking back pages, man, I scored. Got man a match, scored. Still book the rest, I said, fucking get the back pages, you, you love them. Give the papers to my mum as well. So I've got up and I went to the fucking, I went to the papers, and on the, the side bit where you're selling papers, I'm like, fuck me, I'm on the front page, shit. I went, Dad, fuck me, I don't think I'm in the back pages, but I think I'm on every other <laughs> fucking page. The IRA are gonna kill this man. <laughs> And he just giggled. He says, you'll be all right. And then when I got that letter through, and I read it, and Walter read it, and I says, you think he's going to kill us? He went, I think so. Fucking hell. And I said, get the police, and then the police come. And I says, have you seen this letter? Is he serious? I mean, the guy left his name, number, mobile, his house address, and a lot. So he's going to kill us. And the cop went, yeah, he's going to kill you. So we went over and seen him. I waited two, doors, two days. I stayed indoors. And I was shit myself. And um, the police come, and I said, did you see him? I said, yeah. And um, I says, what's, what, is he going to kill us? I went, yeah. I said, fuck me, what are you going to do about it? I went, nothing. I says, until he comes to the, our country, so we're not going to hang around the airport. So when I used to play, I used to look in the crowd and fucking look to see if anyone's got a gun and that. So it was, went on for a few months, I was shit myself. And then obviously I got a letter back from him. He says, OK, you've not done it for a while, I'll let you go now. And <laughs> I could relax then. <laughs> And Fergie, I went, you stupid bastard. <laughs> yeah. yeah but they're giving you something to check under your car for bombs. Yeah, I'll you, the police come. So I say, six o'clock. And I says, what's that? He says, check under your car for bombs. I says, what? If the car starts up, he says, yeah. And I went, fucking hell. And uh, he says, be careful with your meal. If you open it, it could explode in your face. And I was like, really fucking panicking. So I used to get me mate, Jimmy. So Jimmy, go and take his, he drives into work. I'll just have a cigarette at the moment. And I used to wait for fucking Jimmy to start the car up and see if it blew up or not. I'd be, like, <laughs> I'd be like 300 yards away. I'd be like 300 yards away. Mm-hmm. Guys, what are you doing? I'm just having five. Start the fucking car up. Did you break into McCoyster's house? Yeah, I knew he kept his kitchen window open. And he used, I used to have a couple of pints at the grave. McCoyster used to go home at about 11.30. And I used to stay at about one But I knew my house was 1.8 miles from his. So I thought I used to walk home and sit up for the taxi. And then I was walking. And I thought, fuck, I'm starving. So I knew he kept his back kitchen window open a little bit. So I got in and lifted the window up and I went inside and I started just making myself a ham sandwich. And the next thing I just see the light on behind us, we're fucking guys with a baseball bat right behind us. And he went, oh, it's fucking you. He says, I'll see you in the morning. I went, cheers guys, I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> Climbed back up the window and fucking walked over the sandwich. That was hilarious. I mean, fucking hell, good job he didn't whack us with that stick. 
yeah, club because he said he heard somebody downstairs mm. and that, and that was just made me savage. I could, thought it was a wee old house. And you bust into the dressing room, but you had two fish. I think you and McCoy's were injured. Yeah, I was quite mean. Guys were injured, and I'd been fishing. and I got a couple of trout. I said, "Guys, I've got these trout. Why am I sticking in Golden Juice?" Someone's called. He went, "I've got Golden Juice keys." And I was there. Uh, all given sponsored calls, like Dave Murray gave everyone a call with seventeen grand or something. And so I put one in the boot. And Kaiser went, he's going to notice that. I went, I know that, that's all right. And I went inside his car and just squeezed it under the seat, right under the seat so he'd never find it. And then he got into, he must have smelled the chow in the boot. And he come to the dressing room with the chow, he went, Gaza, you'll never catch me out. I went, yeah, you got me there, mate. And fucking two weeks later, he went, Gaza, I'm not being funny, but there's a fucking other fish. <laughs> and I went, no, there isn't. And then... I eventually seen it. I had to get it out. It was fucking stinking his car. <laughs> and he tried to sell it. He couldn't sell the car. So he, he went to David Murray and had to buy him a new fucking car. So that show cost us about 17 yeah. grand or something. So I was got it. But yeah, I had some laughs. What was the game you were drinking whiskey at half time and you came out and scored two? Good thing on. Getting Were you nervous? No. I just fucking, I was just sitting there and I had the first half wasn't the best and I had that row with Koisty. And I was just sitting there, I said, fucking hell, and I went, sorry, Christy. He said, I had any problem. And I was sitting there, I said, fucking, I've got to put my finger out. And then while Archie knocks, I went, are you going to fucking drink? I went, no. He went, go and get one. I went, oh, okay. So I went to the boardroom, I had a treble, and I went, okay, here's another one. So I whacked that in, and he went, he had a drink now. And I went, yeah. He said, no, fucking go out and do the business. I went, okay. And I went and scored two in 20 minutes. But afterwards, we were with the cup final. And Walter come up and he says, right, guys, we're all going out tonight. Gaza. You've had your drink. You're fucking staying indoors. I went, all right then. So I went home and I was about 10 o'clock at night and I found out where the players were in the way, the, the managers and the wives. So I turned up the Indian restaurant, took my clothes up and danced on the table, bollock naked. <laughs> yeah, As you do. Yeah, as I do. <laughs> so it was a bit of a laugh. Uh-huh. Next thing you know, I'm, I fucking retired. And I think, shit, what am I going to do now? Like, you know. You went from like, do, you know, and you, every time you went to bed at night time, you knew you were doing something in the morning. Well, when you quit, you think, what am I going to do now? Like, you know, and I didn't really want to go into management. I did try it. Catering manager. It's funny. The chairman says, Paul, get out of the third division. I did. I put them in the fucking fourth. <laughs> 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 How was it, Paul, going into rehab for the first time? Is that when you admitted for the first time that you had a problem? I didn't really admit it the first time. Yeah, I, I didn't want to admit it, you know. I was only there for 21, I was going to see the 28. Eric Clacken come and seen us. It was so funny, he says, when I say 50 questions, he says, five and under, you're not an alcoholic, and five and over, you are. And I went, okay, and I'm fucking lying, everyone. So I answered the 50 questions. I come up with 35 fucking points, and that's telling lies. Liam Gallagher's done a few videos, says that you were partying one night, and he put out a fire extinguisher. It was in town. It was in London. And... Um, Someone said, Liam Gallagher's in the restaurant, posh as fucking. I went, all right. So I got out the taxi and I went up and I went, hi, Liam. First time I met him, he went, oh, are you all right, guys? I said, oh, and he had a big fill of steak in front of him and I had a couple of drinks and that. And he went, do you want a steak? I went, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not hungry. And he went, all right, I'm just two seconds, I'm going to the toilet. He went to the toilet and I fucking had his steak. And he come back and he went, where's my fucking steak? And I rubbed my stomach and I went, ah, cheers. And he went, fuck it. So I thought he's a way to order another steak. I come back with the fire thing, so I just fucking mullered us all <laughs> over. Wow, Jesus Christ. It just raided all over his man, just all over the table. I didn't give a fuck. I just put it down. And then we just started eating again, having a few drinks. Yeah, had some laughs with him. He's a good guy as well, fucking talented. Yeah, amazing guy. Yeah, yeah, so I've had the opportunity to meet a lot of famous people. Um, but I just take them as if one of me, you know. Like I said, I, I just feel like... I'm just like a normal guy, you know, lucky enough to be good with his feet. I play for Tottenham, and uh, the lads went, because I do something funny. I went, no, I can't. I said, there's a press of watching, I'm just being bought for 2.2 million. I've got to be fucking serious. And I went, ah, you born bastard. So now I'm driving home, and I got wound up. So I look across the road on the way home, and I see a zoo. And I thought, that's OK. So I went home, and I couldn't sleep. I knew what I was going to be doing. So at quarter eight, I went to the zoo, Claimed the fence sort of thing. Not in the guy's door who owned the zoo. He lived in the... Uh, I said, need a favour? He went, fucking hell, Paul Gasker. what do you want? Anything. I went, ostrich, please. So he went, you want a fucking ostrich? Yeah, please. So he gives an ostrich, and I put a number eight shirt on the back, and I went on the training ground, and it was so fucking funny, and I'm waiting for the lads training, 
and I get the sausage out of the back of the car and I threw it on the fucking training pitch. Hey, you fucking lads were fucking laughing their heads off and this ostrich is running all over <laughs> with a gas gang and shirt on. But what was funny, the lads finished training at half past 12. You ever try catching a fucking ostrich? <laughs> so I got to finish around about five o'clock. <laughs> Caught the ostrich because I got tangled up in the, the shirt and uh, I took it back to the zoo. He fucking went off and he said, look the fuck, what are you doing to me ostrich? The feathers were all over the place and everything. Mm. I went, the gaffer doesn't want it, it's shit in front of the goal, <laughs> but it's quick as fuck. <laughs> How was it going to Euro 96 with... Playing for a Scottish team. I got, got, hammered, Andy for, I got hammered for a few months of the players who were going to stick it right up, you English bastard. And I just went to them. I said, Look, you guys, I'm playing about again seven years, so I know how you play. You know how I play, but you don't know how, how I'm well, like when I play for my country. And to score that goal against Andy Gore was fucking brilliant. And I gave him a quite look, a quick, quick glance when I scored it. And then I turned away and he was fucking wasn't happy. And I enjoyed the celebration. And it was quite, it was all right, you know, I was like, I went on holiday and I, I wasn't thinking about it. And then about five days ago, to the end of the holiday, I went, oh, fuck, I've got to go back to Scotland, yeah. And I started panicking a little bit. But uh, the lads were brilliant in the dressing room. I used to do, I used to go like, I used to get a ball in the dressing room and get a mop and pretend it was Colin Henry. And I used to flick it over the mop and then volleyed past Andy <laughs> Gorham and, oh, and then do the celebration. He, used to, he wasn't happy. But yeah, the guys were brilliant, you know. I didn't want to go to Chelsea because of Hoddle. I mean, Hoddle says, I found God. I says, that must have been a fucking great pass. <laughs> <laughs>